Adhocracy News, March 27th, 2017. Today's top stories. Work free for Dan Brown. Billboards blend into the background. YouTube's advertisers are pulling their ads off Google. Hello, I'm David Landine. And I'm J.D. Melville, and welcome to Adhocracy News, where we share the last week's stories on advertising, marketing, art, and design. On to today's top stories. Uh, YouTube is going through a boycott, a major boycott of its advertisers. It seems that, so before this video, you probably saw an ad. Hopefully you watched it instead of having an ad blocker. Because uh, that's how, you know, if we make any, any uh, money, that's, that's how we do it. Uh, and there are a lot of companies that advertise through Google, both th on YouTube and through their uh, advertising program that goes to websites and, and so they can get the exposure. Well, uh, last week, companies such as AT&T, Verizon, Johnson & Johnson, GSK, and Enterprise Holdings all announced that they would be pulling all their ads off of YouTube and off of those websites. Now, this is because um, the research has been showing that these ads have been showing up on um, violent and hate uh, websites as well as terrorist-funded type websites. Yeah, so the, these ads, justifiably so, are feeling like they are making money for terrorist groups. Uh, hate the, groups, yeah. people who, have, who are spreading hate, which is not something that you want your brand to be recognized. Now, you, you may look at a video and never think it and say, okay, well, the, you know, that's just an ad being ran before, but uh, you, know, you could see it, this being a, uh, condoning that kind of message. Exactly. And now this boycott is, has uh, increased to more than 250 organizations. YouTube has promised to tighten their restrictions, to figure out what's going on, to tighten their policies. Um, however, when uh, asked whether Google can ensure that an ad will not be placed next to a, next to hate content, uh, see the Eric Schmidt, who is over, uh, who's the Alphabet executive chairman uh, over marketing, he said, "We can't guarantee it, but we can get pretty close." Whether that'll nullify or, you know, whether that'll soften the, the, the people who are pulling their ads off, we'll have to wait and see. But this boycott could cost Google uh, hundreds of millions of dollars in ad sales. And this is something that, that Google has, you know, been focused on and they're trying to change and they've been trying to change for a while now because people, uh, advertisers specifically, they may not want their brand associated with any kind of a certain message. Um, now, with people being more conscious of what is supported by specific companies, um, you, you definitely don't want these things associated with that. Well, yeah. I mean, because a lot of the, a lot of the brands are based on the person watching, right? Is that what you're saying? But, so, as an advertiser, you can't say, well, I, can't, I don't want this place next to this type of... I mean, you would hope that a person who's buying your stuff doesn't watch hate hate stuff but I mean <laughs> we don't know what you watch after you watch this show we have no idea so it's hard for us to say like you know you watch this and you watch another one you get similar ads for each one I don't know I don't know how the algorithm works but it'll be interesting to see what comes out of this absolutely so Bud uh, Budweiser has selected local artists across several cities to create designs for their home MLB teams so what this is is you may have heard about something similar with, that the NFL did um, with Budweiser where each team kind of had their own personalized can. Well, in this one, they are working with local artists from whatever town that uh, MLB team is, Major League Baseball team is from, and they've asked them to create some designs for a, for a can specific to that team. Uh, they've asked, you know, like, make sure it has features local trait, local landmarks, uh, culture of the city reflects on you know what that city represents, and what else what that team represents, and it's you know it's it's kind of just kind of a fun way of connecting that town with the culture with you know it, it'll be it'll be fun to see, and I like that they're working with local artists. I think that's yeah, a great they, thing. They do stuff like this. Um, you, you see stuff like this uh, with like the NFL did this mm -hmm. um, pretty recently. Also uh, last week in our news we covered Kia. Um, doing this with um, oh, yeah. NBA teams and and scents, you know, car car scents. But I those home those towns have a lot of pride in their teams, and so 
good job on uh, tr- capitalizing on that. <laughs> yeah, I mean that. that, <laughs> I, that way. Again, sports. Sports is sports, but the more you look at it and the more you analyze it from a marketing side, sports is all about money Mark, and yep. and art and advertising and marketing. Like that is what they are. Exactly. Um, so sometimes on long drives, you have to look up and view the billboards around you. Uh, this is a campaign artist, Jennifer uh, Bulland. Uh, she's a, she's an artist out of California and his, her work is now on billboards. Uh, in the roads along, let's see what it's, it's along Gino Tree Trail and Vista Chino in Palm, String, Palm Springs. Which is a very pretty area. Yeah, they have these billboards that are along the side of the road that just have an image of scenery. It's just like a, a, a landscape or a mountain range. Now what's interesting about them is when you get to the right spot, that mountain range actually lines up and you realize that that's actually the mount, mountain range Behind the billboard, oh, cool. so that so the uh, like the edges match up with the edges of the scenery, and so you're it's like, hey, look at look at this billboard that's advertising what's around you. <laughs> <laughs> it's super it's super creative. There, it, it, it this is along with a uh, the Desert X exhibition, uh, which also features a house covered in mirrors. So it's not necessarily invisible, but it kind of does blend in. It, it helps kind of reflect and kind of disappear. Mm-hmm. And it's, this is to promote tourism, uh, to show the scenery that's around them. And actually, it's like advertising, this is where you're going to go. Like this is, if, if you're driving down this in this area, you're probably, and you're a tourist, you're probably going to one of these places. Uh-huh. And so it gives you like, you know, like kind of the idea of like five miles, four miles, like this is showing you like you're going to this mountain, to this mountain that you can actually look at right behind this. But it's, it's really cool how they how they were able to do that. These are actually um, pretty similar to uh, Brian Kane's billboards in Massachusetts that sort of blended in with the trees, kind of with the roads um, back in 2005. Yeah. And it's interesting because I, I, I think um, as, as we become a more... Um, environmentally conscious people as we're, you know, thinking about this. There are a lot of artists that have done things to, um, like, there, there's a hotel that's built up into some trees and it's a, it's a, it's mirrored again. Oh, yeah. Um, I have a friend who's, who's, uh, some friends who have stayed there. Um, and it, it, it's sort of to, one, you can actually look out and feel like you are camping in the middle of the woods, but <laughs> also, like, it sort of disappears and, um, I mean, we live in a world of billboards and signs and you, you go to New York and any big city, sometimes it's overwhelming how many ads there are. And so when these kind of disappear into the background and you, you see the beautiful area around you, it's yeah. always worthwhile. Yeah. All right. I want to cover this next one. Now, if you watch this show and you know anything about me, I, I'm a runner. I do marathons. I do half marathons. When he says runner, he is a big runner. Yeah. Like he he'll run thirteen to twenty six miles just just for fun. Yeah, like that's I did fourteen this morning, for instance. <laughs> um, but like Tel Aviv, the Tel Aviv Marathon has worked with Samson to do something really really creative for the Tel Aviv Marathon this year. Um, so what it is is they are. Tel Aviv, they're expected to get about 40,000 participants on their marathon. This is in Israel, uh, if you don't know where Tel Aviv is. And wh- when you're running, you have what's called a timing chip. And it's to make sure, uh, so like 40,000, if you're in the very back, it's going to be like a while before you cross that starting line. And so they have the timing chip to track when you start the cr- starting line and when you cross the finish line. Okay. So it's like when... So that way it keeps, you know your like, actual you time. You know your actual time versus like the gun time. I waited time. for 45 minutes, I think, <laughs> and then I crossed and then the I, Yeah. Um, and it also has like a security measure, measure to make sure that people aren't cheating and cutting the course and, you know, like getting in a cabin or riding a bicycle. Like if you didn't, if all, if you crossed at the beginning and you didn't cross halfway and then you cross at the end, something's a little fishy there. So, but Samsung is working with the Tel Aviv Marathon to do something even cooler, taking it to the next level. What they'll have is they'll have like these stepping pads along the along the route, and if you step on one, then you get to like you get coins. Like think of like Sonic or Mario, you know, like where you're collecting okay, coins, okay. right? It's like a video game. Does it make the sound? I would hope so, but I don't know. That would be like. 
And uh, then what they're gonna do is when you cross the finish line, any like your tally of how many coins you earned up gets converted into actual money and you can donate that money to the charity of your choice. Okay. I just think that would be really fun. That's really incredible. Yeah. Because I, cause I, cause I think the other thing, I mean, the one thing I know about marathoners and I know about people who run, mm, i.e. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, are, is that you're all, you're all about cutting your time, being very fast, like finding ways to yeah, speed yourself yeah, up. Yeah, when, right? when you're going down a route and it's like an S-curve, you're along like you're trying to find a straightest line just to take, take fewer steps and this this, but this is, is but this is all this is not necessarily like the typical runner i mean there's forty thousand people here all forty thousand aren't going to be caring about like i have to get the best time possible right right and so but 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 for that i mean you've got you know people because of that trying to to you know find the right route and, and cut your time you get people who cheat. You get people who try to shave. Yeah. You know, they may not be cheating. Yeah. They may be doing something that's a little bit, okay. you know, off. Um, but this this is sort of a positive reinforcement that, like, okay, you step on these things and you're going to help charity. Yeah. Just, just by doing the thing that you're already going to do. And I even think even more so it's, it, it's going to help, like, motivate people just to keep going. Like, the more you... The further you, the more of those you step on, like you're helping a charity. All you have to do is just run. Like yeah. you probably paid a lot for that marathon, but you, all you have to do is run. And how, big, how big are these pads? I mean, is it? I don't know. Is I, it something you have to go a, out of the way to like? I don't know how much of it. How like if it's like going across the whole trail, or if it's like just little circles. These I feel like it's gonna be like little circles. I haven't seen any pictures of these, but because I could see people that like, like <laughs> they're like, eh, I'm not gonna like take five steps over that like, way. Just mile to... twenty five. You're just like, it better be right in front of me, or I'm not. <laughs> you know. I know it's charity, but if I, I can't handle it, you know, but I think also it's, it's just, I, I hope somebody dresses up as Sonic the Hedgehog and or Mario, like that would be awesome. <laughs> Yoo-hoo! Um, <laughs> All right. He's on me. <laughs> and, and I just, I hope that this kind of grows. I think that there's a lot of potential in what they're doing of just kind of rethinking a race yeah. to make it more of a, like... You're, you're going, it's not just, you know, you start, you finish, that's all you care about. But like along, there's like little markers and things that you can do. I think that's such a cool way of doing it. All right. Very nice. All right. So you may know the name Dan Brown. Uh, his novels are ones that are fraught with conspiracy and, and all sorts of different controversies and lies. His life is one of, of controversies. Well, um, Kind his, of. <laughs> his new uh, his new book that's coming out October third um, in uh, partnership with Double Day um, is a book called Origin, and um, a little bit of a controversy that had come out about this is that Double Day announced a contest in which uh, anyone could enter and design the cover of Dan Brown's new book. Ooh, wow! I can design a cover for a book, and I can probably like you know win or something. And the winner. Basically, the prize that, that they said is that your cover would be produced in a limited edition to show and, and advertise and, and all that. No prize money, nothing other than that you would be advertised and shown to his 7 million Facebook fans. Don't say that. Oh, wait, are we doing that segment? <laughs> well, that's, that's, not, that's, not, that's what we're doing right now. Are we, we, we have, we, covered, we have things, covered, we covered that before. We've covered we? things like this before. Where I can pay you in I can pay exposure. you in exposure. Yeah, exposure is not something that you pay me in. It's hey, something I die a, from. Let's do a logo contest. Yeah. <laughs> um, so because of this, um, uh, designer and, and kind of advocate Jess, Jessica Hefland um, kind of came back and um, and responded to Doubleday with with these kind of um, things. She estimates Dan Brown's net worth to hover somewhere around 140 million mark, but the prize and prizes for this chosen winner appear to ha offer no compensation at all, <laughs> unless well. you read as I do that the halo effect uh, of this achievement is to be found in the presumed parasitic attachment to Brown's epic social media following, which is also in the millions but includes no dollar amount. And Doubleday's response to this um, was definitely like, yes, if this was going, this this is going to be a limited edition cover. We're not selling these. We're not making money off of these. Um, if it was, they they said um, their marketing manager, right? But even if you're not making money off of this, like you're still, 
like requiring somebody like the people who are working on this in the company are making money. Mm -hmm. So why are you? Yeah, this this big company who, you know, has the money to pay, has, you know, a, an ability to create um, value and worth is asking us to do it for free. So they, they, they wrote, if, you know, if it was going to be sold in stores, we wholeheartedly agree that designers should be paid. Which she replied to them um, that competitions like Double Days devalue designers and their work by asking them to do it for free. The visual results of what you describe as limited edition that will not be uh, sold can, and it sounds like, will be made public online, linked to Doubleday and to Dan Brown, and accordingly to all sorts of public-facing, high-yield social media profiles, thus collecting, uh, collectively sharing whatever work was done for free, whether it was by real or trained people, designers, um, or by those who are just willing to work for free, which devalues the work for all of us, um, which is a lot of exposure for no money, not a model that benefits the designers, though it seems pretty clear to me that it will benefit Doubleday and Dan Brown. Well, thank you. What's your name? Jessica. Jessica Hefland for... Sticking up for us. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking up for the little guy. We, we appreciate that. And, uh, you know, it, it's definitely things like this that, um, I, I mean, yes, someone straight out of school may, you know, have that fun chance. And, but, but not only does it devalue that the, the idea that we can make money um, and, and we're doing something, some kind of service, and something is changing hands, but it also devalues the way, the methods, the service, the um, ideas behind what design is. I mean, it's not just, here's a design, now use it. I need to, you know, I, really, my thought would be that someone would read this book, understand it, work with, with Dan Brown back and forth, coming up with ways to really make it interesting and unique, looking at the strategy of how to sell it, mm -hmm. looking at the strategy of what the book is meaning. Yeah. There's a lot of a lot of other things that that sort of make our our world look like we just simply make art, submit it, and it's done, as opposed to strategy, marketing, um, anything that goes into it. Yeah. Those are our top news stories. Uh, did you see anything this week that we didn't cover? And if you see anything this upcoming week that you want us to cover, send it, send it to us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Yeah, and if you liked what you saw here today, make sure that you click the subscribe button. Um, that will let you know when we have new shows every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, different shows, different types of shows. Um, thank you so much for liking, commenting, subscribing, and sharing our posts. And to start off your week, because, you know, Mondays are hard. Mondays are hard. They are. Uh, here is a video for you to watch. I don't know. Yeah, that's not too bad. I, mean, I, mean... I love this. Five out of five stars. That's my review. Yeah? You like it? Oh, yeah. I'm going to leave a comment. You know what I'm going to say? Deserves an extra star. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, thanks, mate. See you later. Whoa, hang on a second. Where are you going? That'll be 40 bucks. Uh, didn't you hear me mention before about the five stars plus comment? That's your payment. Mm.